In a recent seminar on financial technology, Mr. Peter Ku, APAC leader of IT and Specialized Assurance Services at Deloitte, gave a speech titled, How Fintech is Driving Businesses Nowadays. Mr. Ku briefly introduces how fintech is shaping the world. He then discusses some case studies on digital transformation, providing a glimpse into how technology is aiding this process. Then uh, I'm honored to be here, share some of the experience uh, with you, and then some of them with the local, some of them with the global or even APAC. And talking about uh, from time to time, day-to-day uh, -day different business and enterprises, they do have lots of common challenges. And from time to time, we can see uh, lots of organizations still got stack of papers on the desk, and then uh, having different processes still quite manual, it's not really digital or electronic. And then from department to department, from document to document, then lack of standardization. Then because of these non-standardized uh, processes, then it may not well, get processed on a timely basis. Sometimes the staff may not get the right training. And then uh, get uh, some of the calculation or the results wrong. Then with well, this kind of, uh, well, Brave new world with the digitization. And the quality is also key. Efficiency is also in high demand. Then take a look at the next slide here. Well, I want to actually make a quick definition of FinTech we've been talking about. Then uh, make it short and we simply get the acronyms. It's SECS, A, B, C, D, V, and R. Then what are they? The first one A is artificial intelligence. And it's getting really hot these days, although it started back in the Second World War, then with the basic semi-intelligent automation. And then other than that, blockchain, I think uh, it started back in 2009 with the Bitcoins. Then it brought up, well, some, something we call it the DLT. Then uh, the ledger can actually lock different things and get them, that get them encrypted. Then say Ethereum and then all the all these brand names, and IBM, and then even Oracle got their own blockchain solutions. Cloud, you know, one, then it's getting uh, really uh, popular. Then how directly we're using the term, uh, in the good old days, we got all the servers, all the machines on site. We call them on-prem. And now we say everything, we expect them on the cloud. And put it on internet. And which enables, we call it IoT, Internet of Things. The other one is a big data, and then uh, with the skill set and different solutions, link all the data sources together, and it record more like a data analytics. With all this major data to show it to the uh, management for key decisions, then we have to get them visualized for the useful information and the useful data. The last but not the least is the R. The R is what we're going to talk much about today. We call it RPA. RPA is a robotic process automation. Well, let's take a peek inside what is R. Back in the good old days, like in 1970, maybe some of you were not born at all, then I was maybe still in diapers. And then they got a, well, older generation, we call it dinosaurs on mainframes. And then uh, with the menu or semi uh, typing kind of, uh, we call it uh, RPG, then a report uh, writing generator. Then this kind of semi typing programming. Then uh, with this kind of, I would say, well, dinos or Stone Age era to the young folks these days, then it's actually got an era we call it ERP, Enterprise Resource Planning Era. Then uh, with different systems get integrated with different functions to help an enterprise to manage from the top. And then starting from somewhere around in the mid 90s, came up with a newer term. EPM, then it's Enterprise Performance Management. Then, well, this can actually help tracking different uh, performance and then using a KPI, uh, and then it, it can actually assess the profitability. Now, coming to today, digital. As we talk about the ABCD and VR, then it helps while using this newer FinTech technology. Then with all three of them, we basically segregated into, well, the historical one, we call it the hindsight, and then 
well, reporting more with some performance KPIs. And then, well, for the UMPPM, we got more like an insight, insight. Then reporting and analytics. For FinTech, we take it more like a foresight. Then with newer technology, machine learning, and then we call it NLP, the natural language processing. Then with all these newer techs. Then talking about the evolution of automation. Then in an older days, RLP is kind of like an older term to us. And it's kind of mature, something really mechanical, and then with some kind of mechanized automation. Using real robots, say in the manufacturing, especially car manufacturing, they use lots of robots to put different parts into it and get all the steps standardized with the RPA. Then getting into emerging way, more like an intelligent automation, well, with some uh, smart advisors and then uh, some NLP, natural language processing, then this kind of automation, well, may need some kind of, I would say, machine learning and thinking. Then the newest part is the artificial intelligence. It could be as smart as mean, and then say uh, one of the chess game, then the machine actually bit the world champ. Then think about that, well, it's a brave new world and then a newer horizon. Then uh, a lot of us to go through maybe more with an example. RPA is more like a, another macro Excel. Then with different macros, can uh, well, click with like a recorder, from point to point to point, go through the workflows and to make it easier. That's why it's not really like a robot standing in front of you to all, do all, the, all these things like um, R2. It's not like that, but it's more like just an application. Although it's not rocket science, still it helps quite a lot to get lots of standardized and routine procedures from, well, mecha, um, well I would say mechanical to more, uh, well, agile approach to get things done. Then say, taking a look, a look at this slide, for example, in a sales cycle, then opening an email and attachment, you find out, well, this is uh, like a selling, uh, uh, like a sales order, a, re a sales request from the client. Then you log into the internet with the right applications, for example, SAP or Oracle, the sales modules. And then, well, moving the files from the right folder, copying and pasting, filling in the sales request form, and then reading into the right databases from a CRM and get a client uh, information that will plug them all in. And say, with some rules, say, what if, well, this is like a, a, well, an old client or new client, and then any special discount applicable with volume or discounts or so on. And then collect some social media statistics. For example, this client may be interested buying, uh, well, if this person buys cosmetics out of time, mm, for ladies, maybe facial mask. And then you may want to propose whether you want to buy a lipstick from us. Then this kind of, well, um, social media association can actually help cross sell out of products. And then with the structured data from document, making the right calculations, including the discounts, and then connecting the right ABI, the, uh, well, application program interface. And then scrapping the data from the net and then push it out to the right client. Then when they read it, well, I then the facial mask, I can get the discount. And maybe I want to buy a lipstick. Then all this can be done by RPA instead of a bunch uh, of persons and lots of hands. Then uh, many pairs of hands. And then this helps. Then another one, the key benefits. This one, say, uh, using their, their example just now, the turnaround time is much faster instead of getting lots of pairs of hands. And then, uh, well, reduce potential human fraud. Say, if people or within the organization may change the order a little bit or even get some kind of rebate or whatever, discounts. Okay, then, well, with robots, you cannot cheat. And then it can improve ex uh, executive decision making. Then with all the online real-time information uh, being so efficient, then I know each, every second or even every minute, uh, every day, how much we can make the sales and numbers. And then non-stop performance, around the clock, seven times, 24. They don't need to sleep, they don't need to eat, they don't need to go to the washroom. And then, well, for scalability. Then in this case, if you want to build a sales team from, say, 10 to 100, you have to get them retrained, you have to get them, well, get uh, all, all the standardization, rooms, tasks. But using RPA, just to get the program. Well, plug in newer attributes, like more numbers in it, they can handle. And then by shifting the agents to more interesting tasks, then, for originally, 
for instance, you may have cells, uh, 10 cells agents, but with RPA, you can get at least nine or even 10 of them. Well, to rework on some other meaningful work better for human beings. And then also reducing human errors than omission, well, even misunderstandings because they are all routine programmed and automated. Then as a result, it really helps. And other than that, well, the typical process automation opportunities. Since they are more or less the same, I only prompt a couple of points. Well, with this kind of uh, automation, we can help lots of organizations to so-called getting a couple of terms. The one we usually say from business transformation to digital transformation. And then, well, it can actually, with the efficiency, economy, and the effectiveness, they enhance the predictability on the sales factors or even on the cost. And it helps organizations to better manage their performances. Trends of RPA. What about the trend? Then this is a, a, a piece of information uh, from, the, uh, from Fortune. They talk about uh, their RPA supposedly started in the, somewhere around 20, 2015, 2016. And it goes up and up, up and up every year, while well, every year over 35% growth in the past five years. However, there's a little shift of the trend. And then it originally predicted uh, it will peak out in 2020 and 2021. However, with the COVID, it seems like, well, this may actually drag a little bit longer compared to this chart. And then even the peak may last a little bit longer because lots of people, they have to uh, so-called, uh, well, WFH, uh, work from home, or they call it uh, WFA, work from anywhere. Then, however, it doesn't really happen, even during the COVID uh, pandemic, you may have to, well, go home to get some of the uh, documents or forms missing here and there. They can't really stay at home or work from anywhere. Then they have to get editing, say, paperless environment, digitized in, in electronic form, and then put all the modules in place to make it seamlessly digitized. Then as a result, we can foresee this trend will last a little bit longer from 2020 to 2022 as the peak. And then and an observation is like, after 2022, well, although the peak will actually slow down, however, the digitization of most organizations, especially those efficient ones, will get more digitized. Then turn out the demand may not be as much as before during 2020 and 2021. But after that, well, the, the whole new world will be better and more digitized. Then according to the Deloitte Global RP survey, about 77% CEO said, well, they actually foresee digital transformation will be significantly accelerated. And then RPA is reported to contribute. Improved compliance, about 92%. Well, improved quality and accuracy, about 90%. And then improved productivity, about 86%. Cost reduction, 59%. In general, most CEOs and executives, they agree RPA will help. And there's a growing trend. But are they doing it? Yes and no. Anyways, coming back to uh, an another survey here done by uh, Census Wide, human errors is still the biggest factor. CFO, they do not trust the accuracy of their own financial data, mainly done by their staffs. Then 41% is still a big number, a big portion. Then errors in financial data, adding from weeks to weeks. What's the average? Then according to, uh, well, the individual uh, CFOs, and it, it appears average nine to 10 days per month, like a week and a half per month. Then cumulatively, it could be somewhere around 114 days per year, wasted lots of time to fix mistakes in the errors. Let's come to a case study here. Then I'll pay uh, in different processes, including uh, strategic management, human resources, financial management, treasury, production, supply chain, sales marketing, inventory, well, even some other areas we have not covered. Seems like, well, it has a universal impact and effects. Then case number one, talking about report generation. Then there's a accounting company of, uh, well, uh, multinational companies. 
they have somewhere around 14 persons team creating some kind of consolidation of different financial reports to the CFO on a monthly basis. They, they got well, all the major uh, modules or functions, financial functions, say financial statements, uh, AR, AP, aging, and then cash flow, intercompany uh, or reported eliminations, so and so. Then the challenges is highly manual, getting about 14 pairs of hands to do the mix and matching. And then, well, under different uh, system uh, SLA, the so-called uh, surface level agreement. And then with this kind of surface level agreement, they have to match from the agreement and then to the numbers and to different ledgers. And this is so time consuming and subject to lots of human errors. And the team spends somewhere around 182 hours per month to get this done for the CFO. About 14 full-time equivalents, 14 bodies, well, to make a single class, a single task for report generation. But after using uh, the automation, RPA, the benefit, 100% rate of automation, increasing accuracy over 95%. And then, well, from 182 hours per month to down to 13 hours. And then from 14 bodies down to 1.25, only a person and a quarter. Then this kind of thing, we call it the bots, the robots, automated to do the repetitive and high volume report, reporting processes. It really helps. And then employees, other than the mechanical routine workers, well, they can actually get their brain power to do more creative and higher value work, well, good for them and to the organizations. Then case number one. Then coming down to case number two. Then uh, this one, we got like a major retail, uh, well, franchise chain. Then not only in Hong Kong, but actually uh, in the Southeast Asia. And then uh, again, from time to time, they have to match the point of sales with different payment channels, say different credit cards, at least Visa, Master, Diners Club, uh, American Express, JCB, China Union Pay, so and so. And then uh, with other payment channels, say, uh, well, Alipay, Alipay, Apple Pay, Samsung Pay, Google Pay, WeChat Pay, then these, all these channels. Plus, they do actually give out coupons and then to actually get the debit and credit and even other e-cash. And, and, and then, of course, PayPal and some other uh, payment methods. And with all of these problems, with different banks and then different payment service providers, so time consuming if you make any manual errors with multiple uh, payment records, collection and do the data reconciliation. It has been a nuisance and lots of errors. And then, well, every month they have to get some kind of fights and quarrels with the merchants and then the, the payment service providers because the data is not standardized, different formats and different data fields from different payment channels. Then they have to do the mix and match even with some macros done on Excel. It's not really helpful. Then with the inefficiency, and then, well, they actually got tracked in the reconciliation all the time, rec reconcile, reconcile, and matching, and then they have no other time to do other accounting functions and then fix the time on the reporting, then what can they do? Then they actually, well, deploy us. Say, using the bot handles most of the tasks. For example, well, for a schedule or on ad hoc data extraction request, even from uh, different point of sales, uh, for example, they can read the format with WeChat, even with simplified Chinese format, and then, well, English from maybe Diners Club and American Express, then the bot can actually log into uh, the different source system. And then uh, they go to a different website to download different payment records. And then some of them, they actually came in paper form, for example, the bank statements or the invoices. Then they're using the RPA, the bots. We call it in uh, short form, the bots. They can copy and paste. What we, first of all, using OCR technology, the uh, optical character recognition and then convert them into text, and then put it into a standardized input format. For example, if you get a, well, a, a data entry from MasterCard, the date could be upper right-hand corner. However, Visa comes into the well, upper, well, lower right-hand corner. Then it's everywhere, but they're using the RPA, get all the date format, put it in them. For example, the right middle of while the data fill. 
and get everything standardized from different sources into one single data format. And this saves all the payment records automatically. And all this can be done. In short, what are the benefits? They move much faster, from 120 minutes to 30 minutes, will reduce all the manual errors in the pressing and time. And the shifted focus, 80% of the manual effort re reduced, they can pull these accounting persons to help on other accounting functions. And then not only on the reconciliation, matching, with so many pairs of hands, and across regions, not only in Hong Kong. And then also can do the on-demand report, which means they can do it online real time. Anytime they can just download it and track it much faster. Instead of asking different well, accounting clerks, well, to please get me the information up to this uh, today or this moment. They have to get lots of Excel to calculate for you, but not anymore. With our PA, they <clears throat> store into a, a database just on your finger to click. Then you get the online real-time information. Case number three, and then material enforcing process automation. Uh, this one, again, say, um, talking about from the left to the right, you can see more like a, a, a conveyor belt. Then the goods arrive at the security booth at the warehouse, and then basically they create a, like a receiving report we call GRN. And then the, the goods receive note. And then right on the invoice, when the invoice came in from the merchants. And then put them all together, submit it to the finance. And the finance actually scan it, well, and then put it to, uh, in, in, a, in a, a, a stack, and then pass it to the accounting clerk. And then the invoices are manually entered into SAP. You know what is SAP? Then it's a, like a mega big uh, ERP, enterprise uh, resource planning system. And then going to the right uh, accounting manager or the AP manager, account payable, uh, approved for payment. And then these can e even go further down, say, uh, with all these account payable ledger match with the checks in, the checks coming in or the payments coming in to do the bank reconciliation. Then all these tedious processes would be, well, pain in the neck. Then coming to the pain points, the invoices validation, may, each one may take at least 15 minutes per invoice. And then manually, average over 1,500 invoices per month can be processed. Kind of slow. Overall turnaround time, average 30 minutes per invoice. And eight full-time body to do all these things. And then, well, what can this happen? And in that, well, they cannot really uh, get a good productive uh, environment. And then number of invoices, well, were much less than a high cycle time. They need to actually make it fast if you want to actually do it online real time. And then backlog of all the invoices. Can be paid on time. You may have to pay higher in the net amount or higher, or they can even charge your interest. Well, after our PA, you can tell from before and after in the lower left-hand corner, you can see the before and the after. After with the validation done from 15 minutes per invoice to somewhere less than one minute per invoice. And then increase approximately uh, 4,000 invoices per month, or well, much more than that. And then expecting, well, the cap may be somewhere around, well, 9,000 per month in the next six months. And then it's actually scalable and getting more and faster. Now, overall turn around time around average 12 minutes per invoice, although with some semi-human intervention, still much better than before. And then only two full-time bodies, from eight to two. The, the saving is a lot. And it, it can actually help to do more with less. And then intangible benefit, get a standardization, then different, different plans, and then different, uh, uh, well, the, the, the staff can actually do different things. And then they actually value add instead of doing something mechanical like a robot all the time. They get real robots do their jobs. Then uh, with the turnaround time reduction, more than 60%. And then no matter management and the staff or the employees and even clients and merchants, they are all happy and satisfied. And this is another classic example how RPA can help. And uh, well, with the current challenges in various industries, I mean, demand and supply planning, unforeseeable 
or increase or even decrease of stock demands, then logistics management, whether it's delay of major couriers, workflows, shortage in staff, and then various situations, maybe leaves, illness, all these all this, well, conditions, it happens. Especially like COVID, then with lots of unexpected uh, events and uncertainty. Then I, and as I finance, you want to work from home, as I mentioned. Uh, there may be processes, uh, while some stuff they may not be available, and then some of their modules with the information is still stored in the hard drive in the company or in the plant. Then you have to go back to take it. And marketing and consumer analysis. Then what well, is a major change in customer beha consumer's behavior, especially in this case? You, we cannot use the older model. We have to use a newer model of the COVID pandemic. And then customer support. Then, well, increased demand for remote customer support. Then they are more, uh, well, familiar with, for example, chatbots. A uh, robot can chat with you, even using the RPA techniques. Then these new challenges, or even, I would say, new solutions, while bringing us into a new era of FinTech. Then the future of work, we can tell, um, talking about some strategies, downwards, uh, redesign of their organization workplace, and then even of lots, lots of workflow redesign, and the workforce acquisition. What kind of skill sets do you need well, to get the right talent? But one step, allow me to roll back a little bit. And then, well, actually I got a questions from one of uh, my clients. I heard about, well, Deloitte has done lots of RPA and the digitization projects for, uh, well, for different enterprises. However, I heard there are some failures on RPA projects. Then people, uh, Peter, can you actually tell us, well, what, what are the pain points? How can we actually, well, navigate smoothly instead of hitting the wall with the other, others' uh, bad experiences? Then, why well, I actually brought up one point. Well, this is a very good question, in fact. From time to time, we have observed organizations, they think it's simply a super sophisticated macro uh, program, like Excel macro recorder. Then it's not rocket science, I can do it myself. And it's true, to be honest. That's why when you do the conversion, there are a couple of things. First of all, uh, lots of clients, they don't plan on an enterprise-wide basis. Then we would highly recommend, uh, instead of well, simply do it well, pieces here and pieces there, then well, it may not be successful. Because with some RPAs here, in maybe, for example, uh, financial accounting on the AP modules, and then where yes, you are trying to do the warehousing with some RPA modules, but the rest they are not. Then internal, they cannot be in sync. Or even, well, they are not standardized with the data format, then they cannot get aligned. But if you plan ahead on a macro basis, for all functions, step by step, to get them automated. Then with well, different routines and then plan ahead for the interfaces to get a good alignment. Then it will be successful. That's why rule number one, well, always plan ahead to do a strategic plan and then lay out all the requirements for the roadmap. Second, it's not simply a super Excel macro. Then plan ahead for all the workflow processes, how you can redesign and redirect the routes. And then the third one, well, use the right persons. Some people, they can easily press the button on their fingertips to do all this automation, but some, they don't. But some are really creative, whether you can convert them to do some, well, grow sales and growth analytics, and do some other work, help you to grow your business, use their creativity and innovation. Then, at the end, other than one department, where the enterprise-wide, you can actually get insane with the other functions of the departments. For example, HR, with their uh, soft cost structure and the data plugged into the iconic system. And then maybe the sales department and marketing, then where they do have some uh, good uh, analysis based on your financial figures. If you are not insane with like a microscopic view of the whole enterprises and doing piecemeal here and there within the organization, it may not be that successful. And this is how I explained to my CFO plan. Anyways, ways of working to sustain and strive in uncertain times, like COVID pandemics. 
Automation is good. Then we can use different technology. Alpay is one of those. Then we can talk about using Internet of Things and the ABCD and VR. Then you know better than me right now, I suppose. And I hope so. And then talent. Then first of all, identify the right talent to do the right things. But existing talent. How can we actually retrain them and reposition them and then get them well, to be successful within the organization? And then the strategic planning and thinking, how to do the innovative marketing, all these activities. Well, instead of using the older channel, well, we have digital marketing. And then we have some kind of collecting data from internet and different social media to have some kind of pro strategy with better analytics. And then continue learning using uh, machine learning and then AI to do the analytics. And then if you have this kind of intelligence on hand, as a CEO or executive within the organization, you are one step ahead. I mean, compared to your competitors in this fintech era. Strategy. Then with physical and virtual environment, adapt to the ever-changing world. With better tools like this, RPA and the fintech tools and the technology, then, well, you can actually arch a better automation work as a whole and not piecemeal like what I just mentioned, like all the pain points. You're getting it much more dynamic, and you can do it anywhere, anyhow, anytime. Then, as I mentioned, well, the best approach, we start with a feasibility study and not jump right into it. And then getting all the demand laid out. And then say what kind of workflow mapping and then the maturity of these potential processes can be digitized and then get the right technology, and then get the roadmap shared with different departments, and then do system selection, suggest the right solutions. And then next step, we may want to do uh, proof of concept development, like test driving it. Get something like a stereotype, get a design, RP configuration, automation testing, the product development, and then with the right infrastructure set up, not only IT, but even for uh, well, the, the existing framework or the workflow, then get the right infrastructure set up and get to the digital era. Then the global labor market set to undergo significant transformation. Then with the FinTech, it appears, well, there will be at least well, 0 0.98 million jobs decline. Some of their mechanical work, uh, routine work, manual work will be eliminated. However, don't, don't worry, there will be a gain of 1.74 million jobs, 11% increase, according to the World Economic Forum. Now, I want to share a diagram from uh, the World Economic uh, Forum with the uh, Future of Jobs survey back in 2018. Then let's start with the right-hand corner. We can see some routine one, mechanical one. For example, accounting, bookkeeping, uh, payroll clerks, AP clerks, AR clerks. These kind of jobs will be redundant and highly likely will be eliminated or diminishing. Accountants and artists like us, we are actually uh, the endangered species. And if we simply doing so the manual kind of work, then it will, will be well terminated. And financial analysts with all this AI, artificial intelligence, and then intelligent automation, and even some so-called uh, robot advisors. Why do we still need financial analysts? Well, yes and no, maybe some, but there will not be that uh, many jobs. These kind of roles will, will be quite redundant. Then mechanics and uh, machinery repair, repairs, because lots of them, they are so routine, the parts to be replaced, they can be done by robots. And then at the bottom, you can see lawyers. Then they compare with lots of documents then with these different text and words to put it well into papers. Then this kind of paper and manual work and then compare cases to cases can be done much faster by robots. Then with all this on the right hand side, the redundant roles well, will be further reduced by number of jobs. And then they will be well endangered and endangered. Then coming to the left hand side, some stable roles, they are still in high demand. And too many of them, I'm not going to talk one by one, but I want to talk about, say, uh, the sales and marketing professionals. Then one of the stress, one thing is like, 
for those jobs, those jobs require more human interaction and then more verbal uh, with your speech power, then these kind of jobs will still exist and then will still grow. Other than that, uh, some other may involve intellectual innovation and then even uh, well, with some uh, creative minds and artistics. Then these ears will be still stable. Uh, even nowadays, robots can actually draw nice painting, paintings too. But still, it's original. The or originality of creativity then still will be uh, well, highly respected by us or by the market. Going down to the mid middle road, the new roads, then you can see, say, AI machine learning together, AI machine specialists. Back in the good old days when, when I was still in university, I have never heard about these kind of terms or professions. And then big data specialists, digital transformation specialists. These terms are, well, I don't know, I like it a lot, sounds so sexy, and sounds like the future of the work. Then I actually want to quote an example. Back in somewhere around 2016, I don't know if you heard about a new, a new, new job ad uh, posted uh, basically in New York Times and uh, well, uh, in different major job markets, say blockchain architect. I don't know if you heard about that or not, then someone can actually well, orchestrate and then program and manage a blockchain. Then back in the good old days, well, even in the United States, they have somewhere only a few dozens of people can do it. And then basically boosted up the salary. Okay, make a guess. How much annual salary you think a blockchain architect can make? Half a million bucks US? No, more than that. One million US? No. Actually, high demand, three million US. Well, think about that when it was in high demand, rare species, it can actually jack that, jacked up like uh, rare commodities. Then think about what you have to do nowadays, how to equip ourselves with the right skill set and prepare for the digital era. And coming back to the talents, I'm talking about well, we segregate different people with different attributes in the different color. And then, for example, the business professional from time to time, well, they may be, they know what the business flows, what data they require, they define the requirements. And then, well, the skill set may, may or may not be able to, uh, well, tell what this technology is all about. And then we call them the red collar, the red collar, per, the red persons. And then the blue one, like the blue collar, they know IT well, but they may not know the business requirements of the business flow. And then they may not understand all the business requirements. From time to time, when you do, well, like a, a system implementation, Turn out they may point fingers at each other. But you don't understand IT. I don't want to talk to you. You don't understand my requirements. Well, I spend money on you. Then they get into fights. And then, it seems like, well, using Andy Lau's famous slogan, nowadays, this kind of surface attitude is not appropriate anymore. We have to actually evolve into a newer, well, uh, personality and requirements. We have to actually get the hybrid. While well, someone can uh, acquire the professional knowledge and business domain knowledge, also they understand at least a uh, high level uh, the emerging technology, the ABCD, VR, and then well get the business know-how. We call them the purple persons. One of the recommendations to you, although you may study simply uh, some business domains, then as a red persons or you may study mainly in the techno technological path, and then more the hardcore computer science and engineering would be the blue persons. But, well, from what we've, we've shown you today, according to WEF or the survey, well, the will or the business will basically in high demand of purple persons. That's why, welcome to this uh, digital and fintech era and equip yourself to be a purple person. To recap, the world has become much more disruptive than with the lattice here, A, B, C, D, V, R. The job market and talents, well, the requirements will, to will be totally changed, a whole new ball game in the future. And then for, with RPA, it en enables quality, efficiency, effectiveness, and even economy. It helps. 
And then, well, RP consists not only of technology, but, even, uh, but also of changes in workforces, processes, and strategy. And RPA can transform from traditional business model to bring future of work. And they will become the mainstream and not a side stream. Then they will become the core strategy and plan of all the major organizations around the world. Then being an IT expert with the communication, this is, is the key. And then we do need red persons. We do need per, uh, uh, blue persons. But we need much more, in, in some sense, the purple persons. Then during the pandemic, it brings lots of ripples, effects, and even pains well, to the workplace. Leading to the job market, with the economy shrinkage and then job market downsizing, the change is now. Then, if you need any help, please consult your mentors, consult your colleagues, consult your uh, superiors and consult your subordinates, and consult your consultants like us. Thank you.